140 is slow motor speed control. We're going to use this project, which includes the motor and adjustable resistor. Before we turn the circuit on, we will move the lever on the RV so that's by the three snap wire here. We will turn on the slide switch and the motor, which does not have the fan on it, will spin. We're not supposed to put the fan on the motor for this project. And then we can slowly move the adjustable resistor lever away from the three snap wire and the motor will slow. The motor should spin on its own, but if it doesn't, you then give it a push to start it. If that doesn't work, then you may have to replace the batteries. Now we're going to turn off the slide switch and turn the motor shaft counterclockwise with fingers. And it's pretty easy to do so when the switch is off, but now let's try it when the switch is on. Be very careful here, don't let go of the motor, but see how easy it is to turn it counterclockwise when the switch is on. It's harder because the circuit is trying to make the motor spin the opposite direction, clockwise, at the same time. Like I may have said in previous projects with the motor, the, it needs a lot of electricity to start spinning, but once it is going, then it needs less. The resistors, which include the RV, and R1 resistor are limiting the amount of current flowing through the circuit. So that's why the motor may barely spin. But with this particular, with my circuit, it doesn't seem to have that problem. Although actually now, well that was because the RV was set on the lowest setting. Now it's on the highest setting and the motor will spin on its own. 141 is slow motor motor start aid. We use the same circuit as in the previous project, but we add the C4 capacitator over the R1 resistor. Make sure the positive side of the component faces toward the motor and with the RV on the highest setting, we will turn on the slide switch. The motor starts pretty easily. And now in the previous circuit, when the RV was at its lowest setting, the motor may have required a small push to get it started. But with the C4 capacitator, we won't have that problem it starts on its own. That is because the capacitator allows a short surge of electricity to flow through it until it charges up. And that stores the electricity to bypass the high resistance of the resistors and give the motor a head start. 142 is RC motor. For this project, we will be using the infrared sensor and we will need a remote control that uses an infrared signal. We will turn on the slide switch. The motor briefly spins and then stops. And we will simply point the remote control and it can be any TV, stereo, DVD, or other type of infrared remote in your home. We will aim it and push any of the buttons. And look at that, the motor rotates, the fan spins. And it will spin as long as a button on the remote is being held down. When I let go of the button, the motor stops. Doesn't matter which button you're pushing. Now, Let's remove the C4 capacitator 
and try the circuit again. The motor still works, except it moves in quick bursts instead of at a smooth, fast speed. Makes a clicking noise. Project 143 is series lights. We're going to use this simple circuit, which includes all three main LEDs, and we will turn on the slide switch. It may be hard to tell, and the effect is probably best in a dim room, but all three LEDs do light up, even though they're not at full brightness. They also flash and blink. The reason why they flash is because the color LED is, has a microcircuit which is controlling the other LEDs as well. It's controlling the current through the circuit. And the reason why they're dim is because the batteries need to overcome the activation voltage for every LED in the series before any can come on. And that doesn't leave much voltage to overcome the resistance in the circuit. Now let's try replacing one of the LEDs with a three snap wire. Now look at that, look at that major difference. The red and white LEDs are much brighter now and they also don't flash because I removed the color LED which was controlling them. Also, if you swap the locations of any of the LEDs in the circuit without control changing their direction, the result will be the same. For 144 wacky sound control, we're going to use this circuit and turn on the slide switch. You hear an unusual buzzing like sound coming from the speaker, but if we were to hold the circuit up toward a light source, the sound becomes higher pitched. Now we're going to hit the press switch. Now be aware, this is going to be pretty loud. This is the highest pitch that this particular circuit can obtain. And I think when you're holding down the press switch, you're bypassing the phototransistor, which controls resistance. Right now, the phototransistor cannot get any light, but when it receives the maximum amount of light, the circuit, I think, will sound just like it does when you hold down the press switch. Project 145 is Musical Shapes. Now, this project, as well as the other two projects, are going to, for the most part, are just going to have descriptions, because right now I don't have the necessary extra materials to do them. For Project 145, Musical Shapes, I can demonstrate the second part of this project, but we will be using the red jump and black jumper wires for this project and for method a which i'm not going to do you have to spread some water on a table into puddles of different shapes such as the ones that are shown here and then touch the jumper wires to points at the end of the puddles for method b which i can demonstrate you'll need a sharp pencil and a number two lead pencil is best and draw the shape, fill in the shapes on a hard flat surface even though I'm doing this on carpet it's best on a flat surface on a solid surface and press hard and fill in several times until you have a thick even layer of pencil lead and then touch the ends of the wires to each of the shapes. I'm going to turn the circuit on and the circuit buzzes, although it's pretty low pitch. But I'm going to see if I can touch both of these jumper wires at the same time against the shapes and let's see what happens.
you may hear a little bit of a difference because I tried to fill this lead in. Yep. Now it's going to be harder to do it with the other two shapes because they're smaller and there's really not a lot of... Oh wow, there we go. Oh no, that's because I directly touched the wires together. But if the if there was more lead, then the circuit would be louder because lead acts like an electrical conductor even though it's not as good as metal. Now for method C, which requires adult supervision and permission, you could use double-sided pencils or very carefully break a pencil in half and then touch the jumper wires to the black core of the pencil at both ends. Now long narrow shapes have more resistance than short wide ones. The black core pencils is graphite, which is the same material used in the resistors in the pivot stand. Graphite is not a good conductor of electricity, so that's why it might be used as an electrical resistor. Project 146, Human and Liquid Sounds, uses the same circuit, and I will be able to do the first part of it, which requires you to simply touch the jumper wires to the ends of your fingers. I'm going to turn on the slide switch now, and I'm going to put my one finger on the red jumper wire and the other finger on the black one. Now that doesn't seem to work. You may have to wet them. All right, there we go. I wet the tips. The sound is a little bit more high pitched now. And that's because your body resistance is not as strong as that of the R5 resistor in this circuit. This resistor is limiting the current. The second part requires, the, uh, requires you to put the ends of the jumper wires in a cup of water without the metal parts touching each other. And the water will change the sound since it conducts electricity. And then use saw for the third part of the project and stir it to dissolve it. The sound should have a higher pitch now because salt water has even less resistance than plain water. And don't drink any water used here. 147 is human and liquid light. I will be able to demonstrate the first part of this project just like the previous one, but we're going to use a different circuit and it is based on light and not sound. We have the R1 resistor and the red and black jumper wires. We're not going to connect them together. We're going to turn on the slide switch and we can adjust the level of the adjustable resistor. And you'll see that nothing happens. But now I'm going to put my fingers against the ends of the jumper wires and let's see what happens. As my fingers come into contact with both ends of the jumper wires, the white LED comes on. It's kind of getting dim now because the... Yep, there we go. And that is because my fingers are conducting electricity. I wet the tips of them and once again, even though it's disgusting, saliva might be best and still moisture and it will conduct electricity. As it dries off, I think the electrical conductivity on my fingers goes down and so it will not light the LED. I have to re-wet them in order to bring the LED back on. And you could try this at different settings on the adjustable resistor. The LED will be brighter on some settings than others. This is the brightest setting. And then on this setting, the LED may not come on at all. Now, the next two parts of this circuit are basically the same as in the previous circuit. The second part requires you to use a cup of clear water, and then the third part requires you to use a cup of salt water. And don't drink any water. 
from there. 148 is blow on the light. We are going to use this circuit and turn on the slide switch. The RV lever is furthest away from me. It's on the highest setting, but now we're going to move it so the LED just turns off. Now I'm going to blow into the microphone and watch the white LED as I do so. The white LED comes on and it will be on as long as I am blowing into it. I don't know if I can talk into it. Hello? Yes, I can if I'm loud enough. Hello? How are you? Goodbye. And the principle of this project is quite simple. The microphone acts like a resistor that changes in value because of changes in air pressure on its surface. And that's how it's used to control this circuit. 149 is blow off the light. We will use this circuit and turn on the slide switch. The white LED immediately comes on and now I am going to blow as hard as I can into the microphone and watch the white LED carefully. It's very difficult to do so, but if you were to blow or make it n enough noise, the white LED may turn off for a moment. Hello? The white LED, the microphone is not as sensitive in this project as it was in the previous one. And plus, I don't have good blowing skills, so that may also be why it doesn't work too well when I do it. But be careful, because you don't want to get lightheaded from blowing too hard.